You gotta be stronger. Like Ruth. Well, less cussing. <clears throat> Darlene, we need to talk. <laughs> Welcome to Something Crunchy. Tyler is homies with Blake. Blake is the older bro of Blair. Blair is married to Tyler and is a slutty slut slut. Welcome to Something Crunchy. What the hell is crunchy? Welcome to Something Crunchy. Welcome to another special edition episode of Something Crunchy. I'm Kellen Blake. With me as always, Blair and Tyler Dressel. We have another very crunchy guest joining us tonight. You've seen him in movies like Instant Family, The Best of Enemies, and The Darkest Minds. And of course, you know him for his role as Three Langmore on Ozark. Please welcome Carson Holmes. Hey. Thank you for joining us. How are you, Carson? Of course, I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Glad to have you on. This is our last crunch down for the season. We're approaching Halloween. Any fun and exciting plans for the ween? Uh, not too much. A lot of pumpkin carving. So lot I'm of very pumpkin excited pumpkin. for that. Always, always do that with my little sister. Yeah. Oh, love right that. On. Man, I have my little sister here, and our traditions are far gnarlier than that. Why don't we do anything normal? I know. Pumpkin <laughs> carving. Can we do that? <laughs> <laughs> Wholesome. <laughs> yeah. Any uh, particular patterns for you that you do every year, or do you try to do something new, outdo yourself every time? I'm not going to lie, my, my go-to pattern, the one I love every every single time, is I'll do a big face, and it'll, it'll look like he's taking a, like, chewing on a tinier, smaller pumpkin, and then on the smaller pumpkin, you do, like, a scared face, because he's being eaten by the bigger one. <laughs> it's an experience. It's I love so it. Good. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I love it. It's that. an experience. Yeah, it's, it's fun. You know, it's interactive. You know what I mean? You have <laughs> multiple pumpkin layers. <laughs> Cutest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Glad you said it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think will be the most popular costume this year? Oh gosh, I have no idea. Um, I, I my little sister, she loves Day of the Dead, so I, I, I'm guessing that's what she'll be doing. And nice. I'm thinking Dahmer is going to yeah. be among the most popular of the Halloween choices. That's a good. Call. I do. It's, it's easy. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. You're probably exactly right now. It's That's, very yeah, easy are, with the glasses and like you just need a couple key pieces. Mm-hmm. I just have a feeling that's going to be a popular one. A real easy persona. Yeah. And maybe some pop culture references. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some Amber Heard's or like <laughs> some, <laughs> yeah. some slappy. Like, I just I have a feeling we're going to see something like that. Ooh, I'm going to be a piece think? of shit on a bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that's funny yeah yeah well let's start with ozark the show just wrapped up this year and if i remember correctly you were the last surviving langmore were you not i am yeah or i was yeah nice. so that's pretty it's pretty cool i feel like i won ozark you, honestly. Well, yeah, yeah. You know I mean? I did. yes you did like you think of uh the other big netflix series like uh squid game and like there's a clear winner at the end like Epic you did kind too. of win Ozark. That's that's pretty cool to say. That's awesome. You know, I, I theoretically inherited everything, and I'm like, basically everybody else has moved out of the Ozark. It's all mine. So, <laughs> you know, I think things are looking up for, things are looking up for three, I think. Yeah, hopefully. for sure. <laughs> yeah, have you pitched your spinoff series to Bateman yet? <laughs> you know, I I tried, but something that I've always respected about everybody there is they they knew when they wanted it to end and they didn't want it to become one of these shows that was just progressively getting longer and longer and longer. And when that happens, the writing, you know, usually is what is thrown to the fire for lack of a better term. You're right. So they wanted to keep it really well written up until the very last point and they knew when to get out, you know. Well, I agree with you in, in no. a general sense, but I do feel like there's laying more to the story. Yeah, yeah there's, there's, really, <laughs> there's so you much know, more I agree. to the story. I agree. I'd love, I'd love to see a spinoff. For I'd sure. I'd love to see a spinoff yeah, come. Me and, and Tuck, like, uh, you, who that character is. You, nope. you and Baby Zeke now report to the cartel. <laughs> he's he's grown up. <laughs> yes, and exactly. uh, Yeah, you and Baby Zeke take over. <laughs> I love it. Oh, we could spend a I love while it. on that. And then Jonas can come down and manage. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. Oh man. Yeah, we're on to something it's here. Just right so funny. <laughs> it writes itself. All right. So you started on the series in 2017. Yeah. So that made you what 13 or 14 at the time? I was 13 when I started. It, that which was 
crazy 13. to get on a show like that at 13. Were you even allowed to yeah. watch the series when it aired? <laughs> no, absolutely not. I remember <laughs> nice. uh, when I so I, when I when I first got my audition uh, for it, I was in the middle of like middle school finals, and I, I had to bring it in with me, and it was this monologue. And every other word, you know, was fuck this and cocksucker and blow, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. And I, again, 13 year old, I was in Mrs. White's <laughs> class and she's looking over my shoulder. She's like, why aren't you studying for the exam? And I'm just, I, as quickly as I could, I was blacking out everything I possibly could on it. I was like, no, I just got to read this. You know what I mean? It's, I was told this is for a class. So I, it was crazy. And it, it, oh, that audition scene was was amazing. It was um, it actually never ended up getting written to the show, but there was a scene where Jason's character was thinking about committing suicide, and this like little Boy Scout kid um, was basically talking him off the cliff and being like, "Well, if you're going to kill yourself, can I at least have your bike?" Um, and it, it was such a funny scene. It was it was amazing, and I can't believe it never made it in. And you were the but, kid. I was the kid. I was the kid being to like Jason's character. Like yeah. if you do end up killing yourself, that's a really nice bike. Can I have it? So <laughs> oh, God. It was, oh yeah. No, it was really well written too, but it was, it was hilarious. I still have me and my, my 13 year old baby face doing that audition. It's the funniest thing ever. You, you totally yeah. had the baby face going on. And I understand because you grew yeah. up and these were like your you know, adolescent years on the show. People have thought that multiple mm-hmm. actors have played three Langmore. It's honestly hilarious. Everybody, you know what I mean? Um, this season is different. This season, I actually look like me. So this is the first season I've ever been recognized. Uh, this is the first season where if I pe- tell people, oh, I'm on a show called Ozark, they're like, oh my gosh, I know who you are. Because by the time the show would be released, it'd be like a year later. And I looked like a completely different human being. And so <laughs> nobody ever believed it was me for years. So for the crazy. first, uh, you You're know, like, first no, it's season. me. <laughs> yeah, nobody thought it was me. I'm sure now you get recognized pretty often for this character. What are the Ozark questions that you get asked most often, or what do people want to know about three? Honestly, I think people are more I, confused by anything else because um, I don't, I, you know what I mean? I'm on the show, but I'm not one of the, the leads. So people have seen it, and, and I go, oh, I'm on the show. And it takes them a second, and they're like, wait a minute. You're a trailer person. You live in the trailer park. Oh my gosh, you're related to Ruth. You know, it's that kind of like uh, seven degrees, Kevin Bacon type association <laughs> finally getting to me. Um, I, I'd say probably my craziest uh, encounter. I was, I, I actually was in the Galapagos over the summer doing uh, sea turtle research. And I was in the Galapagos airport and this lady started screaming at me in Spanish. And I had no <laughs> idea what she was saying. And somebody next, next to me, was, was translating they were like they recognize you from a netflix series and i was like oh my gosh that's me that's, it was very funny it was very full circle i couldn't i couldn't believe it it that's was very amazing. funny but how, yeah how often do people yeah. think that uh i know you oh you remind me so much of familiar. my yeah of my grandson or you remind me so much of my <laughs> usually not that much actually i've had a few people um I've had uh, probably just a handful, probably five or six that have actually been like, oh, my gosh. They're like, you are the embodiment of my my grandson or my niece or something. <laughs> and then they usually ask, like, can I get a photo with you? Because they'll, they'll get a kick out of that. But I feel yeah. like you're going to have a lot, a lot of that coming up. Yeah, for, you do have one of those faces. <laughs> yeah. <totally sad. laughs> well, on Ozark, going yeah. in, did you see it being a slam dunk for success, knowing that Laura Linney and all these names were attached? Well, so that's that's the funny thing is, you know, uh, being 13 and uh, I'm I, I was a musical theater kid. I used to sing opera. I grew up in that world. I didn't know anything about film or TV. So I really didn't know who any of these people were, um, which, you know, my my parents, they knew who they were. Um, and they thought Ozark was the third thing I ever auditioned for. So oh I was God. very new to the, the acting environment. I mean, it, it went from zero to 60 really quickly. Oh, so it was, it was all a whirl. It was very confusing to me. And I remember, I remember the first read down. I actually, I sat next down to this super nice lady and I turned to her and I went, this like Jason Bateman's supposed to be a big guy. I, I hope he likes me. You know, I'm really nervous. And she was like, I'm sure you're going to do great. 
Of course, looking back on that now, I know that was Laura Linney, and she was just as, you know, a much of a star. And, oh, but honestly, funny. guys, you cannot find a nicer person than Laura. She is the embodiment of everything that is good, in my opinion. And, I mean, even then, gosh knows she was humble enough to, like, be like, you know what? I think you're going to leave a great impression on him and could not have been nicer. So, yeah. Oh, that's funny. Unbelievable people. Hear I love hearing that about Laura Linney. That's yeah. really yeah. cool. Because, yeah, she has some range on screen. So, yeah. I, like, you, you really don't know kind of how she would be off screen. So, that's He's really so cool to hear. Too. And Jason oh. Bateman, he had done 50 flavors of comedy before this and deciding to show some range. <laughs> and you got to be a part of the one drama role that he had that was far from horrible bosses and dodgeball. I bet that was kind of interesting working with a comedic actor in a very non comedic role. The bathroom scene, like your first one with him in the, uh, in the, like, I think it was season one where he's with like all the Langmores. Yeah. His money just got stolen. Yeah. Yes. Some serious bait. I, I, I remember <laughs> that scene so unbelievably vividly. That was my second day on set ever, um, was that scene. Whoa. And I, I literally, I didn't know squat. And like, I, oh my gosh, I remember that so vividly. Um, and, you know what I mean? It was my second day ever. I didn't know any better, and I couldn't. I couldn't stop smiling for whatever the reason. Yeah. Because uh, I was I was a thirteen year old kid, and we were all there, and like they, everybody was. You know, that was an actual bathroom in the middle of some state park in Georgia. Really? So it, it was not a set. That was on location in the middle of nowhere. It was terrifying to be in there. Oh. Um, and so I was I was nervous, and I was smiling, and. Jason like took me aside and he's like, Hey, you're with Netflix. Now you need to pull your stuff together and you need to do this. And, and I, I forget exactly what he said. I have it written down somewhere because I wrote it down afterwards. But like after that, every single job I did after I always took that little mantra, he said to me outside of that bathroom in the middle of nowhere, Georgia. And I use that to kind of, well, Carson, Very what the hell is the mantra? Sense, yeah. That's so good. I don't know. I can't, I can't remember what it was. I'd have to, I'd have to go through the find You it. know I, it. I tried to. Hang in? I, I tried to. <laughs> I don't know. I tried to, I tried to keep. It, I was learning so much. I was learning so oh much. Gosh, because, I mean, uh, Sophia Hublitz, Charlie Tahan, um, all, all these people, Charlie Tahan especially, he, he had done a ton of stuff by this point. He played yeah. my brother, uh, yeah, Wyatt, Wyatt, on the show. So he, he was also, you know, a child actor, and so was Jason. And Sophia Hublitz, Hublitz, Hublitz had uh, done a few things as well. Julia, uh, Julia had done quite a few movies. So everybody on set, you know, might not have been the big name that Jason and Laura were, but they were well-versed in how everything was supposed to work. Well, and that's completely and changed now. Lost. Yeah, that's a totally different story after the show. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about Julia Garner. I mean, she's done incredibly well after playing Ruth, and it seems like she would be really fun to work with. Did you see this being a breakout role for her know. as you guys were filming it? Oh, um, you know what? It was honestly after, during season one. No, nobody thought that that was where the show was really going to gear. But but the audience absolutely fell in love with her, and you know, I feel like that's what kind of geared the show in the way that it ended up going. Uh, cause I remember, I remember talking to everybody end of season one and they were talking about if the show does get picked up, they were going to try and target it more towards, um, you know, that, that accounting thinking and Chicago ish kind of right back alley deal less on the Ozark oh. side of things. Um, that, that was their original plan. If I'm I not mistaken, what was going to happen with Chicago, originally they were planning on doing a lot more in Chicago, but people absolutely fell in love with Ruth. And, yes. and so, you know, the, the story and the plot changed to um, highlight those aspects of it. And I'm so happy they did because, you know what I mean? I got to be in it more and they got to show off my family, my insanely messed up family. Yes. And did you think you would be the last no, yeah, Langmore definitely... standing by the end? I'm going to be honest. Being on this show has been the funniest thing in the world because every single day I'd go into work and be like, am I dead today? And I'd always ask the hair and makeup people because they know before everybody else because they know if they got to dress you up to look dead or not. Oh my gosh. Um, so that was like that. everybody's little ritual. They would go they would go to hair and makeup and then be like, all right, am I dying today or what's going on? And I know you I, know. And like, I remember 
Exactly. I remember during each season when I found out everybody died, I, I, you know, and we would all be like, oh, no, it sucks. I'm so sorry. And just wipe our foreheads thinking that it wasn't us. But <laughs> it, it was crazy to be on. It really was. Yeah, you never know when that I've, day is your last because your character's killed off. And it is kind of one of those shows, just kind of kind of like Game of Thrones, where you just yeah. anything can happen at any moment. You yeah. never know who's killed off. That was exactly what I was about to say. We would always call it the Game of Thrones syndrome. Um, <laughs> I, I remember when, when uh, Cade, uh, Trevor Long, who yeah. played my uncle in the show, um, I remember the day that he died. We were sitting at lunch, and he was reading through the next script. And he was like, well, I get shot. Uh, I was like, no, what happened? He was like, yep, there you go, read it. He's like, I get killed on the side of the road. I was like, oh, <laughs> well, we you love because, You know what I mean? Everybody... The second you step into that limelight, you better well believe you're going to be taken out of it swiftly. Man, that's yeah. crazy. There's no guarantees or you're going to be in it for this many seasons or this many episodes. You just kind of find out as it comes along. Well, it was a family. Everybody loved each other so much. You know what I mean? Nobody ever wanted to kill anybody off. Right. So it really was like a Russian roof thing. You know, you hear about in shows how they're like, oh, well, that person, we didn't like them. So their character had to die. That never, in my opinion, uh, happened on this show. Everybody was a family. Everybody loved each other dearly. Oh, that's awesome. You yeah. still get paid for the whole season. Oh yeah. You just, you could, you just get paid for the season. And then, um, yeah, I'm not even sure we get royalties with Netflix. Not a boy. Yeah. Yeah. Now that Ozark is all wrapped up, if you could just walk onto the set and join any cast of a show currently running, what would it be? <laughs> that is an interesting question. Um, well, I, honestly, it'd be really neat to do House of Dragons. I knew you were going to say um, that. Yeah, well, I, I look very European, you know. Um, I could wear, like, I guess cable net wouldn't really work, but I could have a Scottish or an Irish accent. I think I could no, fit into man. that. No, world, you'd be in the armor. Easy. You're Kingsguard, man. You'd be in the armor. 6'2", <laughs> you kidding? No, you'd be <laughs> Kingsguard. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, no, I that that would be neat. Yeah, and then I'd be used to that. Well, am I going to die today? Am I going to die tomorrow? Yeah, I love you. Same That's thing life. all over again. Man, well, Sam yeah. Rockwell, Mark Wahlberg, you shared the screen with some big names already. Who's atop your wish list of you know, <laughs> other actors that you'd like to work with? Oh gosh, um, honestly, top of my wish list is probably Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep, so cool. Yeah. She's was, the best. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. I know. That's I was expecting House of the Dragon. Probably, I was yeah. not expecting Meryl Streep. This would yeah, be that's a great really answer, nice. though. She's so cool. No. Oh, you got to remember, I'm a I'm a theater kid. I'm a theater kid turned film. Yeah. So uh, she is she he is like almighty. So when do you break out yeah. these opera skills? <laughs> like, do you have a operatic TikTok? I mean, I feel like you could be really. Oh. I love <laughs> killing yeah. the internet with the opera, opera comedy, opera well, what, what, critiques, opera comedy, <laughs> opera comedy, opera Omerty. covers, um, <laughs> opera <but> covers. Up, <laughs> what ended up happening is, is opera is actually how I got into acting in the first place. Um, when I was nine years old, I was cast in the lead at the college here for a show called a mall and the night visitors. And, um, I forget how long we did that show for, but it was literally, it was me, the nine year old and like a bunch of 25 year olds on stage. Wow. Um, and it was like the first thing I ever got paid for the first thing I ever did. It was a, I think it's like two and a half hours long opera. And Damn. I'm on stage. I was on stage for the entirety of it. <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> and from there I started doing musical theater and I started falling in love with that. And, if you ever do musical theater, you know that um, you get a show hole. You know what I mean? You, you get a high from going out on stage, yeah. literally. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. so I was in a show hole, and somebody was like, well, we're doing acting classes for film and TV down the street. And I was like, well, maybe that'd be fun. So I went and I did that for a month, and the people were like, well, you're okay. They're like, here's a number for an agent. And um, my agent at the time, the only reason she took me is because her entire family of redheads had left the week before <laughs> and so she was looking to fill that demographic yeah and so it, and it all worked out and i i booked my first my second and my third ever audition it plateaued for a long time after that but 
first, second, third, which nobody had ever heard of. And it was amazing. It was the it whirlwind. Oh I was God. thrown into this world. Good for you. Yeah, it was grabs. really cool. I, and I love it, you know? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's been it's been a long journey, but it's been a wonderful one. And Mr. Galapagos, when you're not working, I understand you're a big travel guy and love scuba diving. Where's the best place that you've been to scuba? So, 10 out of 10, the Galapagos. Because I, well, the research that I was doing there, um, you you dive where no humans have like ever dove before. That's untouched by man yeah. completely. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it it it's unbelievable. The animals are not afraid of you. Everything is lustrous. It, you know what I mean? It's full of life. There was one dive I did and I was at like 85 feet. And I kid you not, there were probably 70 or 80 sea lions all around me. Wow. And they had never come into contact with humans before. And they were so curious and inquisitive. And they were like, well, what the heck is this thing? And they were biting my flippers and my yeah. hands, like not hard, but curious. they, they could, they couldn't yeah. figure out what I was. And, and it's, I kid you not, as I was worrying about all of that, a manta ray just came and went right by me. It was, and it was, I was like, this is, this is unbelievable. Uh, you can't beat that. Um, that is unbelievable. It was, amazing. it was amazing. But that's also shark food. I would be freaking out if I'm in a pile of sea lions. Oh. Like I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm part of the like pack. Keep it cool I, and like we're all about to be hunted. Fair enough, but <laughs> there's safety in numbers at that point, you know. That's true. Safety in numbers. You got a lot of them. Well, I know I would not be the fastest of the sea lions in that situation. Yes. And I got caught up in some fire coral once in the Caymans, and that was just enough marine life for me. It was a little traumatic. Speaking speaking of sharks, one of the big dives that you do when you're in the Galapagos, and I was fortunate enough to be able to do at the end of the season, is the hammerhead dive. uh, It's called Kicker Rock. And it's where there's just these massive... guess they're migrations of hammerhead sharks i mean thousands upon thousands and um you you just dive in the middle of them and i was i was there one of the last days of the season for this so the water was super murky there were probably was probably five seven feet of visibility and again i was down to like 60 70 feet and i look up and i have this video of i mean just hundreds of shadows above me and it's the oh, most terrifying thing you've ever God. seen yeah but it was magical you're down there under that with red hair i that has to be horrifying <laughs> pretty it was pretty dang cool yeah it that's was pretty cool. dang cool that's, I'm not pretty gonna amazing. Lie. that's cool well it's october and around here crunch tober which is typically a whole month dedicated to horror <laughs> let's at least bring it up i mean do you watch any films or shows of the horror variety Ugh. Not not really of the horror variety. I mean, I like Hocus Pocus, but that's about it. We could talk not, a little Hocus Pocus. Nothing we can always scary. talk about Hocus Pocus. <laughs> All right. So the second one just came yeah, out. I like, Did you see it? It was kind of a letdown. Oh, was it? I I have not been able to watch it yet. I I've just I've literally I've been traveling and I've just been so busy. I but I also it. promised my little sister I would watch it with her. Yeah, I don't know what I was but expecting. I but feel I, like it'll be a good. It it wasn't horrible. It just nostalgic. it just wasn't good. We yeah, it was kind of nostalgic. One. It was so much originality. So cute. I'll tell you what pissed me off, Blair. I wanted more originality, <laughs> I guess, and maybe like the song and exactly. It was the song. Remember in the first one, there was the big scene. They did the cover. What was it? The, I put a spell on you. They're witches. They put a spell oh, on so you. Good. Okay, when you hear that song, you think of that. the movie. So they're like, we need to do that again in this one. And so they have the same you know type of scene build up. And they do a cover where they perform and they choose the song that everyone knows from Coyote Ugly and will continue to remember from Coyote Ugly. And it has nothing to do with witches or spells or Halloween. In one way or another, we're going to remember it from the other movie because that was a poor choice. Not Hokey Pokey 2. Not Hokey Pokey 2. Um, no, it was cute. I wish there was like a few changes here and there, but like... It hit the nostalgia bone for sure. It was a case of doing it 10 years too late, just like the Bill and Ted one and the Dumb and Dumber one. And they just do it too late. Gotta see it. Carson, don't do Ozark 2 in 20 years. We need you and baby Zeke in like three to five years. Yeah. While we're all fresh on it. Yes. (laughs) Did we just lose him in the middle of our Hocus Pocus conversation? Did he hear any of it? Where's Carson? You there? Well, I had a very funny game for Carson. <laughs> very um, funny game. 
Can you hear me? Carson, you hear, bud? There you are. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. I have no idea what happened. It was static on the other end for no. about like 30 seconds, and then I called back in. I didn't know what was going on. No, no worries. We were just getting to disclosing the secrets to the universe, but we could do that another so. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Got all the answers you missed. Them, so we'll see you next week. Actually, where we lost you, I was like in the middle of a rant about uh, Hocus Pocus too. I don't, <laughs> did, I don't you, know. did you catch any of that? Yeah, I don't know if you caught any of my rant. Really, don't even need to delve back. Into we don't need to get back I, into I it. I heard the first part of it. I heard the first part of it. I heard it. it you wish it was more original. Yes. That's what I gathered. That's Is that correct? Needed. Yes. He went down that path for a it while. Hit the nostalgia uh, yeah. And I, you got to see it. Don't rush to see it. You gotta see it next year, maybe <laughs> if you got time. The, on, the honestly, the, the biggest reason I'm into Hocus Pocus is the the second thing I ever did. The thing before Ozark was uh, it was a what was it? It was a I think a Subway commercial. It was an extra on it. So when I say I got the first two things, the first one was for Cinemax. The second one was just a commercial. <laughs> I don't even think I was in the thing at the end. But the guy who is the extra standing next to me plays the bully in the first Hocus Pocus. Ice? And, Which one? Yeah, the, the one with the bowl cut. My name's not Ernie no more. It's Ron. Ice. Whoa! The, the, his friend? It's ice, yeah. Hollywood! <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, that's so awesome. He ended up... And, well, and that's when I learned that this is a very tough industry. Because... He was at the top of his game at my age, you know. But Hocus when Hocus he did the Subway status. commercial with me, he he was like in his mid forties, really nice guy, had a lot of great things to say. But he was an extra, same as me, in Charlotte, North Carolina. Wow, yeah. it's a wild business. All right, so you're not into the horror, mm-hmm. and just for clarification, Hocus Pocus does not count as horror. Um, so, <laughs> so you haven't seen Smile, <laughs> Barbarian, Black Phone, Nope. Have you seen any of these yet? Gosh. I just had a bunch of. I've seen Vivarium. Vivarium. Uh, I, I, wait, wait, wait. That sounds familiar. That sounds familiar. Who's in that? Yeah, I forget who was in it. Was it Emily Blunt? The story about people that get like trapped in this neighborhood, this endless neighborhood, and they have to raise like this demonic baby thing. I don't know how I got oh. roped into watching it. It was very interesting. <laughs> that doesn't sound up your alley. A lot of people person. like it. I like I like happiness and sunshine. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> That's Emily Blunt. I watch it. And that's why I love Ozark because you know that's so it, uh, that motto on Ozark. Totally, it's so fluffy. As, as long light. as you're on the heroin, as long as you're on the heroin, <laughs> that everybody's making on the show is happy. <laughs> that's true. For free base and opium seeds. That's true. Exactly. Exactly. You're popping the poppy. <laughs> yeah. Well, we like to play a game on every episode and try to come up with a little something for each guest as well. We had to bring horror into it, but let's stay on course. And if you'll indulge us, we'd like to see if you can guess a couple of your Ozark castmates by which horror movie they starred in. So this is just simply a guessing game. You oh, can, God. It, you can either know your horror or you can know your castmates. Okay. Feel free to bounce these off of Blair and Tyler. They don't have the questions and answers in front of them. We're here to help if you All need right. us. <clears throat> all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need help. Is it multiple choice or no? It's just free for all. It's it's a free for all. I was gonna give you multiple choice, well, but you lead you the way. You're better than that. No. Yeah, you're better than that. You have those. Well, I'll tell you why. Okay. You were you were gonna get multiple choice, but Gina Hecht ruined that for you. Uh, <laughs> she was the after all of these interviews, she's the only one ever to come on and have a perfect game, and she was the interview last. And so the last game we Killed played with it. the guest, she was five for five. And we're gonna take it out on you. Yep. <laughs> Sorry about you. Fair enough. Let's make it. Let's go. Let's. We'll go strong. Zero for five. I got yeah. that. We're taking you to the deep end, buddy. <laughs> <Here we go. laughs> All right, here we go. First uh, one. She played Aaron Brunner in The Exorcism of Emily Rose in 2005. Ooh. Um, Julia Garner. That's incorrect. Give you one more guess. Laura Linney. There it is. Hey, yo. Okay. Hey. That was his warm up one. Okay. Nice and easy. He's on the board. It. He's on the board. No more gimmies, Carson. He's batting a thousand so far. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, gosh. He played Simon in The Gift from 2015. 
you? Really? Um, I feel like I should know this. I read this book in like middle school. I feel like you should um, know this. It's in what 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 year was it? Twenty fifteen. Is it is it Jason Bateman? Oh, Super cute. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Nicely done, Carson. Oh, man. Okay. Shouldn't have given you that first one. Record setting pace. Yeah, this is a nice pace. All right, so he's on the board. All right. This castmate played Josh in Super Dark Times in 2017. Super Dark Times. Josh. Like it sounds like a young person. I, I guess Charlie Tangham. With Blair's help, wow. that is correct. Charlie Tangham. Blair. I am keeping the Thank score. You Blair, for you, by appreciate the way. it. <laughs> <laughs> I have you. He was also in <laughs> I Am Legend in 2007. That's almost horror. So we were going to use that in a in a pinch. Okay. Three for three, all, by the way. Woohoo! All I know is that Charlie played like I think the young scarecrow in DC universe and like a series. I don't know. Really, really? young scarecrow. I love Charlie. I, I've known. Yeah, I think I think I think that's who he played, and they did like a series or something. I honestly, I don't know much else of his. That's work. one of He's DC's offbeat characters, him. the little scarecrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Chucky Six. <laughs> okay. <laughs> who played Gwen in The Last Exorcism Part Two in 2013? Ooh. Uh, is this? Can I? Can I ask a? question the query had you not gotten three for three absolutely <laughs> uh, okay no, no you know it. you no, you could you could follow up with a question i just can't promise you an answer true you can ask okay all right is this is this person a new was it is it a newer character on the show or have they been there like since or is it an older character it's like it's an og yeah, character these, these are all none of these are obscure characters these are all okay. og cast they went the distance. Um, they went the distance. Um, dang. Oh, who? Why can't I think of her name? Um, Sophia. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know if it would be Sophia. It's not, um, Players throwing out. I don't know. Yeah, I guess. No. <laughs> throwing it out there. You're not helping. No. Me. I know. I'm just. That was Julia Garner. She no, pl- I like. That was my really? next guess. Yes, Julia Garner played Gwen in The Last Exorcism Part Two from 2013. Oh. Whoa, tough one. Biscuits was going to get that one. Yeah. All right, I'm so Great. glad you missed one. Wow, I am just <laughs> incredibly relieved. All right, all right, you can get this last one here. Four for five. That's that's the perfect. You're still game. doing great. Okay, last one. He played the character Jay. In Every Time I Die from 2019. From 2019, Jay from Every Time I Die. Mm hmm. Um, Trevor Long. Trevor Long. No, Mark Menchaca. Oh, Mark no, Menchaca. No, oh, my God. Menchaca. Russ Langmore. That was, did he play, that was your dad, right? You played your dad? Yeah, yeah, he played my dad. That's crazy. <laughs> the last one. He's Always like, the case. Yes, and now he's like, now I don't feel guilty. I haven't, Jeez, I haven't my own screen father. <laughs> <laughs> if it makes yeah, you feel no, any better, I have not seen any. every time I die. <laughs> <laughs> he's an amazing actor. I haven't thought about it. I hope he's doing well. I haven't thought about it in a while. <laughs> he is an amazing actor. And in this like, research, I learned that he played guitar and like sings and plays guitar really well. Like he's like he's a musician. That was I was really impressed by that. Every single scene that you see him playing guitar in, that's him actually like playing guitar. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I love that's, hearing uh, that was so good. Most positive. Yeah. yeah, him that's his recordings that he went into the studio with everybody. And I mean, legit, I remember uh, season one and two, we stayed at a hotel. Everybody stayed at a hotel in uh, Buckhead, Atlanta. And I mean, you'd go down from like 11 to 4 a.m. And he would just be out there, you know, by the fire, just playing away with some random people that he pulled off the side of the street who wanted to talk to him. It was hilarious. He's a great guy. An unbelievable guitarist. 
Well, that's yeah. awesome. And well played on the three for five. That's great. That works out well what? for both of us. Yes. We could both live with that. Walk out of well, here with a little three for five. My name is three. My name, my name oh, is three. Oh, so wow. Three. Hello. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Take a bow. Oh, I, you just... <laughs> well played. It was too perfect. Brilliant. Well, before we let you go, <laughs> any you. new and exciting projects you're working on? Um, I've got one or two in the in the oven, but nothing that I can talk about right now. Nothing you could talk about right now. That means House of the Dragon. Nothing I, I can talk. Smell it. <laughs> you made the King's Guard. You didn't I want to wish. let us know. Watch the IMDb I page for wish. more. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh man, well you have been yeah. awesome, and you can follow Carson on Instagram at Carson underscore Holmes three, and also keep an eye on that INDB page. Yeah. You have really been a blast, man. I really do appreciate it, yeah. and I hope we get a chance to talk again sometime. Of course, thank you guys so much. I hope you have a very happy October. Likewise, have a good Halloween. Thanks, Thanks man. Carson. See you, dude. Thank you. All have right. a great day, guys. You, you too. too. All right, well, bye. talk soon. Bye. Love you. Bye. <laughs> Oh, he was nice. He is that cool. was fun. Three out of three. five. Three got three. Oh. That works oh, out. Man. That's one hundred percent correct. Right you just there. can't write this shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So fun. Well done. Well, Crunchtober was not scary this year. We just, you know what? Well, hocus pocus. We ran out of shit. We'll come back in next year and <laughs> we'll be in total control. We've gone but hard. You guys capacity. make the scary shit. We will report on it next year. No, yeah, like it, check in all of our past Crunchtobers because we have been like going way hard up. Yeah. It's like you want the shit, go go back. Don't go sleep back. on go previous back. Crunchtobers. No, go, go back. hard on season before last. It's like. Oh. High production value horror profile dating game. It's and all so Go good. back. <laughs> now in this one, it's you watch any horror? Nah, it gets cool. <laughs> <laughs> you seen that? Nah, nah me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. I love when there's years where you just like go so fucking hard for. And this year it was like, nah. nah. yeah, hocus pocus too. Nah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> I mean, Black Phone was all right. Nope, wasn't horror. I do want to see Barbarian. I do want to see Smile. There Those are next stuff on my like, list. I'm going to throw themes. up in the theater. I want to see the, like, the Terrifier new? 2. I want, I want to puke in my new shoes. Like, where's the that new if scary? If there's stuff Terrifier that's going to make like, throw up while watching it. That's marketing gimmick we bullshit. Need to know. That is the equivalent of your drug dealer saying, this shit killed somebody. You're going to love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is the movie equivalent of I got that ER shit. <laughs> <laughs> the fentanyl of horror. Yes. La- it is. Lie your ass. <laughs> cool. oh, it's it's cool. cool. My friend it's gave it cool. to me. Oh, gosh. That's funny. That's fun. That's <laughs> All right. That's Blair! <laughs> New Dream Card giveaway over at 8080. In addition to the 15% off you get for using code Crunchy, they're offering double the entries right now, all for a brand new Lamborghini, plus $60,000 in cash. You do not want to miss out. Another Lambo? Shit! Nor do you want to forget to check out somethingcrunchy.com, where you'll find every episode, our links to social media, and the Almighty Crunch Store, where you'll find all kinds of crunchy gear showing that you are a proud citizen of Crunch Nation. Then there's the Something Crunchy Facebook group, your number one destination for dank memes. This has been another episode of Something Crunchy, and as always, don't ever forget to live your crunchiest life and be crunchy to one another. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, follow, and all that crunchy good shit. Thank you for listening. So he we'll is say, like beyond talented too. Like it is. Shut up, Blair. <laughs> 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 All right, I feel better. <clears throat> I can't see straight. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of something different <laughs> in my head. <laughs> no. What are you doing over there, buzzins? <laughs> You'll understand one day hammered dog shit over there. <laughs> it's been a long fucking week. <laughs> I need you to be something. Something patient tonight, okay? <laughs>
<laughs> Welcome to the next Don't release the dragon on me. Episode of Stop the Patient. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your host, a little tardy. 